Keep scrolling if you already know who Polly Murray is. <laughs> I'll bet you're still here, either because you don't know who Polly is or because you do and you know that Polly is always worth hearing more about. If this is your first time hearing the name, don't stress. I taught black history in an elementary school in Brooklyn for years and I had no idea who Polly was. But it's time for things to change. Polly Murray was an activist, a writer, a lawyer, a poet, a priest, you name it, Polly did it. Polly was black and gender non-conforming and they broke the bounds of categorization at a time when categories were quite rigid. Polly was expansive. As an educator, I often think about how every kid needs both windows and mirrors. They need to learn about experiences that differ from their own, and at the same time, they need to see themselves reflected in the stories they encounter. And occasionally, you find both windows and mirrors in one person's story. Polly is one of those people. Polly Murray was a trailblazer. Not only did Polly refuse to give up their seat on a bus 15 years before the famous Montgomery bus boycotts, Polly was also involved in nonviolent protests against segregated lunch counters 17 years before the Greensboro sit ins, 10 years before Thurgood Marshall would win the case that would effectively outlaw segregation. Polly Murray wrote a paper outlining the approach that should be taken, and Thurgood Marshall used that paper in preparation for his case. Case. It's honestly kind of astounding. Polly's footprints are everywhere. Polly knew that their activism was laying the groundwork for greater changes that would come around race and gender. And that is unglamorous work. To plant seeds knowing that you probably won't be around to enjoy most of the fruit it's the epitome of selflessness. Towards the end of Polly's life, they said that they realized most of the issues they cared about were largely moral and spiritual. Polly had come to the conclusion that oppressive beliefs about how human beings should live and be and interact were not going to change through law alone, but that change would need to occur in human hearts. And I think anyone who studies Polly's story will find that their hearts soften. If when you look at Polly's life, you see mirrors, you will find healing. And if when you look at Polly's life, you see windows, you will find deep, deep empathy. <laughs>